Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Building Code. Zach Watovich. And I'm Charlie Bertwistle. Hope you're doing well out there. Charlie, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I feel like the, the energy on that intro is a little low. Are you, wow, just put me on are blast. You feel okay? Uh, you know, it's a Friday. I should be a little more jazzed up. Maybe a just, it's been a long week. You yeah. Know? yeah. I need you to pick me up a little bit. We'll pick you up, uh, especially with the, the guests we have today. Today is a special episode because we have two guests joining us. I from, think this is the first time we've had a double. It could be. Breaking Ground, um, a historic episode. Uh, we have... Ed Earl and Paul Sanderman from Contractor Staffing Source uh, going to talk to us a little bit about how to build a good team, how to build a good company culture, how to build a good company overall. And Ed has actually been on here once before. So, you know, we always like to give shout outs to the, the returning uh, guest members as, uh, as an honor and an, a prestige the, the wall to make of fame. that list. Yeah, absolutely. Did they get their own t-shirt, Charlie? Well, if we had t-shirts to give away, yes, they would. Uh, so we'll put that on the list. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. Zach, what are, you, what are you looking forward to most here? These are one of my favorite topics to get into. It's kind of one of the, the things that you don't always put a, a lot of focus on in running a business. It's like, how do I get the right team? But I find right. it really engaging just because it's kind of like the, the glue of how you build a, a great foundation of a company. So yeah, I'm, I love getting this perspective and learning some things about how to really motivate and find people to really help drive your goals as a business. So, well, I think too, we've had a few different guests on before that talk about how hard it is to find good labor. Uh, so hopefully the guests we have today can give some solutions to that and, and everyone listening can learn. Um, I know I will, but without, further, <laughs> without further ado, let's go ahead and get them in here. Hey, Ed and Paul, welcome to The Building Code. Thank you so much for joining us. Ed, it's your second time here on The Building Code, but we'd love to hear a little bit about both of you uh, and kind of tell us about your, your story. Sure. All right, I'll start. Uh, I've been in construction for about 30 years, and I uh, have been here in San Diego doing that whole time. Uh, started off really as an owner's rep, and I still am. So for those of you that don't know what an owner's rep is, I'm a professional advisor that's hired by homeowners that are building a custom home or doing a complex, you know, million plus dollar remodel. And I help them build their team, select their their builder, their their architect, interior designer, and then I uh, coordinate and uh, and integrate between all of the parties involved to keep the project on budget and on time. So, and I met Paul oh seven eight years ago. I actually hired him as uh, my business coach and. Um, and so he worked with me and then actually I started working with him and uh, we currently are business coaches together. We do a lot of coaching exclusively with residential contractors and uh, we also um, have the business contractor staffing source, uh, which I will let Paul describe uh, how that that came about. But that was that was a result of our, our work. And then I'm also a public speaker and um, and I, uh, I, I speak at the Builders Show every year and and uh, various construction organizations kind of combining the experiences that i have both as working with homeowners right as an owner's rep and in working with residential contractors as a business coach and so my presentations kind of see both sides of the table that's amazing uh I, there's so much i want to ask but i don't want to cut <laughs> all off. So paul too, yeah. <laughs> give us your story and then... I, I was going to tell him you know i it's my biggest biggest success and biggest failure Oh, wow. I, I will go into it in detail, but the good news, I made in $3 million in one day. The oh. bad news is I was never able to get his other business off the ground the way I wanted to. Mm. But I made up for it, so I'm good. Yeah, I would. I think I'd take that deal. Yeah, um, that's, that's right. admittedly. That's a pretty good day. <laughs> that's a good day, right? So um, I've been doing this for 40 years. Makes me an old guy, right? Um, I've been, when I started, sort of got contractors, but my cell phone was in the back of my car, like a radio thing. You'd call them and say, hi, operator. Can I talk to so-and-so? Cord so, and all, I, just hanging yeah, out the back. That's right. So I, I, yeah, I had one of those. So I, I've been dragging contractors through technology for 40 years. Um, as I said, they're Luddites, and that's just the way contractors are, but it's fun. Um, I use contractors because I used to work with doctors and attorneys and a bunch of things, but I mean, contractors are the best guys I know. Unfortunately, a lot of industries, lie, cheating, and stealing is sort of like the norm, you know? <laughs> and for contractors, they're just great guys, you know? I'm and so I just got rid of all my other clients, and I just focused on contractors. Um, and so I remember the cell phone was a big deal, and they said it was a fad. And then I remember they had to get them off their pagers. 
And the other thing I did was, um, I remember email. No, I don't need an email, excuse me. <laughs> and then it went to, you know, websites, which were a waste of time. I mean, they were just kids' things. I mean, I actually, I could have had the URL, loan.com. I'm that old. Did <laughs> that I would have been. No. <laughs> yeah, it would have been the best day ever. That yeah, would have been the best day ever. Printing right? money but, for uh, eternity. But I did I did it get to my friend rents.com. So I, I go way back, sort of do the whole technology thing. Man, off air, but, I want to ask cool. you, what should I be getting into? You know, yeah. it's just like, what investments uh, are we making? Chat GPT, let's go. There we go. We brought it all around. <laughs> Oh, that's that's a whole other. We got to save that content for a different episode. Yeah, that's, that's got a different episode. That that is changing everything. <laughs> it's you know, it's all that stuff stacked up. So there was cell phones, then there was email, and then I remember. I mean, I knew Donnie White over at Co-Construct when he was in his garage, and I knew um, Dan Hatton when he had like ten employees. I think we go way back, and I remember trying to convince people to go on uh, web-based kind of software, and it was the same kind of thing. Too much trouble, a pain in the butt. I'm not interested. Blah blah blah. So I finally got him on that. And my newest thing is trying to get everybody on ChatGPT and using AI, which is going to change everything again. But it's that's what I've spent my most of my life doing is dragging contractors. So I probably have worked with maybe fifteen hundred contractors or better, anywhere between a million and a hundred million. And I think I have some stupid number like one hundred fifty thousand hours of working with contractors. A long time. I love how you translate it at an hourly rate. You know, it's yeah. like time and material. Got to get the whole thing. <laughs> Um, well, this is, you know, we're already just like with so many threads to pull on. Right. But I want to kind of focus on, we brought you on today to talk about the labor shortage in the construction industry. Whereas, you know, there's going to be, as the construction industry continues to evolve, technology gets adapted, but they are always going to need people out in the field to, you know, build fortunately I talked to a friend of mine, you still have to use still until they get, you know, printed houses, which may be a while. Yeah. Right. Um, you still have to have somebody build the house. So even though they can take all the paperwork side out with AI, it's it's one of those solid industries that you can't export to another country. Got to have the skills to do the work. Right? Have skills. Absolutely. Um, and so, you know, when, when you guys are working with contractors, I'm curious, how often does the, the labor shortage come up? Is this a primary concern of a well, lot it, of our it's builders? An on, it's an ongoing problem. I mean, I, I actually started the company, Contractor Staffing Source, because of that. I was a consultant for years. And I couldn't find, I mean, I could build a company for, you know, from a million to 15 million, but I, I didn't have time to build a team and the contractor sort of sucks at building the team. Right. And so I, my first idea was I got this really cool software, got an applicant tracking system uh, and I've got, you know, uh, assessment system, all this really neat software. I gave it to my clients and they totally screwed it up. They had no time. So I said, okay, I'll do it. So I literally put a guy named Justin in my garage, and that was about four years ago or so. And now we have like 300 clients. We have like, like 21 people that work for me. We went through 75,000 resumes to buy 400 people last year. And we worked about, so it's grown a lot. And all we do is construction. And the reason we're successful is because there's this huge need because contractors just generally aren't good at it. They run an ad in Indeed and then call the guy three weeks later. It doesn't work. <laughs> So something I'm I'm kind of interested in is we just had someone on the other day talking about how many different roles there are in construction. I think it was um, we were talking about uh, women in construction, and you know typically you think construction, you think guy with a hammer going out and putting a nail on a board. Right. Uh, are you guys primarily focused on like field crew workers, or do you look for like office managers, designers, architect architects? What's kind of like the well, the breadth we look, of the roles? We found out we look for anybody because when you're building a team, right, which is what we try to do, um, it could be the laborer, or it could be the CEO, or the project manager, or anybody on the team. So we work with anybody between the laborer to the owner. Now, obviously, we have a set of assessments, and the, and the, the assessment for a labor is way different than the assessment right. for a project manager, right? In fact, I remember recruiting 350 uh, framers for a large framing contractor. Nothing was in English, zero, right? We did everything in Spanish, and it worked fine. So it really depends on who you're going after, but there's, in, there's really maybe five or six basic roles. There's not a ton. There's you know the project manager, the superintendent, the carpenters. Then they usually hired out all the tradespeople, which is a whole different thing. But there's not a lot of roles. But again, and you have the office staff as well, right? right. You know, so you know whether some people, if they have estimators, purchasing managers, office managers, 
So, you know, depending on the size of the company. Well, it, we had something really good happen by, by COVID. I mean, COVID did have its good things. Um, and that was, you know, one of the things we're looking for is like a project coordinator or what do you call it, a um, selection coordinator, right? And we found out wedding planners are killer at it, right? Hmm. I could totally see you that. Think yeah. about it. I mean, a wedding planner, you've got to get a bunch of fairly flaky people, the band, <laughs> the caterer, all those people. They all got to be at the right place at the right time, right? Yeah. And they all have to look good. And the, and the bride has to be happy, the bridesmaid, all, all these very sort of upset people it's an important to, time in their be, life you yeah. know they want right. it to look great have to be, you have to have to be all this flaky people they all have to get it one time and it's all got to work it's pretty much like a remodeling project right yep and so we found some awesome wedding planners that made killer people in the construction industry and they work for way less because that hospitality industry doesn't pay well but a lot of contractors don't think oh i'm going to hire a wedding planner to do my <laughs> you know be my office manager. They don't even think that right. way. They think out of the box a little bit. And we started that during the pandemic, right? Because we were, you know, trying to find people and <laughs> wedding planners were not very busy during the pandemic, <laughs> right? right? So right. People were not planning weddings. So right. we found people there. We found hotel managers that we brought in as office managers. And that really broadened our perspective to realize that you don't have to just hire from within the construction industry, that you can actually, especially since the pandemic, I think it's much easier and um, and uh, uh, to find the related skills, but not necessarily have to have construction experience. Another thing that's really shifted is since the pandemic, people aren't so stuck on people have to come into the office. Mm. And we've got people that are actually office managers for construction company in Boston, and they live in Texas. Hmm. And that would have never happened before the pandemic. Because they probably have some really nice cloud-based software that lets them manage all their products and uh... absolutely, <laughs> there you absolutely. go. If something no, like that I'm existed, saying, but Builderprint has made that a lot easier, obviously, because you can see everything remotely. I mean, you can be a, a an owner of a company and be in Hawaii and manage your business in Texas, which you couldn't do before. Right. I want to I want to touch briefly on something Ed that you mentioned around the wedding planner and hotel managers and things like that. I feel like. Uh, half the people Zach and I have on the podcast, their dad owned a construction business and they took it over when he left. And then the other half grew up nowhere even remotely close to a job site and just like stumbled into the construction mm -hmm. world and are very, very successful in it. So when you're talking to some of your clients and helping them find talent, how do you kind of convince them like, hey, there are people that can be very, very successful in this role that have never touched a hammer in their entire life? Like, how do you get them to have that perspective of finding top talent, kind of regardless of what their background is? Well, it sort of depends on how desperate they are. <laughs> a fair answer. Like, they may <laughs> hire Zach if they're like, they really need somebody. I do mean, not recommend. Seriously, you know, it, they're going, <laughs> you know, we can hire a, a, an office manager who's a wedding planner, and it will cost you, you know, 50 grand a year. We can get somebody who's run a construction office and it's 75,000 a year, take your choice. Right. Yeah. That and is. I think, right. And I think too, I mean, we really try to emphasize with our clients and through our assessment system, you know, when we're assessing uh, our potential candidates that are, have applied for positions, we assess them much more on, on character, personality, temperament, you know, who they are as opposed to what they know. And because those are kind of skills are you, you can develop those skills, but if they don't have the right work ethic, if they don't have the right temperament, they're not going to be good no matter what. And so that's part of the way that we we get people to understand that that's what you really should be hiring based not on a skills based hiring, but really based on personality assessments and aptitudes. There's who you are and what you know, right? We can't fix who you are. And when we do assessments, we were, we were able to assess very sophisticated AI kind of things, exactly who you are. Are you honest? Are you smart? You know, we, I can tell more about you than your mom in about 45 minutes. Testing, <laughs> testing. So if we do that, we know who they are as a person. Now the skills testing, whether they can, you know, lay out a foundation or not, we're not sure. But obviously if they're not the right person, no matter how they lay out the foundation, if there's not a good culture fit, it's not going to work. Do you see a lot of contractors using apprenticeships to address the, the skill side of it? You know, like, that, that's the kind of the story of construction is a lot of it is self-taught and like, and so I, it really rings for me, like the people that have done really well, they do kind of have the it factor. Like there's just something tenacious about them. They're willing to like keep doing more, but they may not necessarily have the hard skills, but they, you know, they, they kind of taught themselves. 
And so is that what you guys kind of, you know, talk to your customers about? I would say the short answer is no. No. I mean, we need to do way better on that as a culture because, you know, I, I have some, you know, kids or friends of kids and I told them to become park carpenters, become electricians and plumbers. I think it's a great career. But unfortunately, our educational system does not emphasize the trades. And it's really hard to get your average kid in high school to decide, I really want to be a plumber. It, it's it's hard to do. And that's unfortunate because plumbers make 150 grand a year and they right. do a great thing, right? But it's just not, in our educational system, it really doesn't drive the trades very hard, which is unfortunate. I think um, something I want to touch on briefly is also the once you have really really good employees how do you retain really really good employees um it, especially with the labor shortage and how hard it is to find them once you have them you have to keep them locked down is that something that you guys typically work with businesses on as well as a, you know as far as kind of combating burnout and toxic work environments and and right. making sure that people are happy in their jobs well i'll comment first we've developed a system called pass which is performance assessment system and most contractors are really bad at human resources management. They just suck, right? I mean, they get the guys, they give them their tools and say, go out and do your thing, right? They're not like building a team. Mm -hmm. When I think about it, the most important part of any business is the ability to build a team. I mean, Elon Musk is who he is, not because he's really smart, because he knows how to build awesome teams, right? And so most contractors don't think of team building skill that's really important to being a contractor, but it is amazingly important. So what we do with them is we put them on a system where they, they, you know, they talk to their employees, they evaluate the employees quarterly, they come up with goals, they come up with performance evaluations, way they're going to get better. Like we even have a matrix we use, which it has the corporate fit as well as the, you know, their, their ability to do the job, their performance. And there's a quadrant. So the idea is everybody should be able to do their job well and fit into the corporate culture. And if they're not, they shouldn't be on the team. But we know how to assess that. And most, most contractors don't get that. They don't understand how to build a team, how to assess the team, and how to make that team you know, feel better. Because if you don't have a good corporate culture and people don't want to work there, now they can work anywhere else. And also it's the best way of attracting new people because you're a great place to work. Right. You know, I'm a I'm a big sports guy, and I use the analogy of a sports team to our contractor clients all the time. You know, you look at any successful sports team, and they do a few things. First off, they're always recruiting, right? And they don't just have their number one. I tell the story of, uh, you know, the Eagles one year, right? And their their top string quarterback got knocked out, and it was their second string quarterback that brought them and won them a Super Bowl. So you always want to be developing your second and third string players. You don't want to just have your star two project managers and then be desperate when one of them leaves. The second is that you have to be always assessing these people and making sure that they're continuing to perform and to grow and develop. Right. If a professional athlete doesn't perform, they're gone. Right. They're they're you know, they're on the bench and pretty soon they're back down in, in the minor leagues or the G leagues or whatever. So um, and then the third thing is that you want to attract people, winners to your team, right? Everyone wants to be on a winning team. You can see my San Diego Padres cap back there, right? I mean, this year, finally, we have a decent team. Like people want to be on our team before, you know, baseball players are like, I don't want to go play in San Diego and finish last place every year. So if you're a great team, if you're a good contractor and you've built this winning team, People want to come and work with you, you know, and people on your team will tell their friends, God, this is a great place to work. And so that's the kind of the concepts that you have, that that's what creates a successful construction business. For the record, I'll play in San Diego. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just the weather. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. That, not a bad place to be. I don't know. You could right. be in Cleveland. Uh, no offense. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I love that. It makes a ton of positive momentum. Right? You lay the foundation, you keep building upon it. What are some ways that you guys kind of talk to your businesses about like showing that appreciation so that they do kind of become those qualified, you know, it's essentially like an MPS score telling other people about why you want to be there. Right. Well, first place, it isn't about money. I mean, you've got to play market and you pay market value and you've got to pay fairly, but just throwing money at things doesn't make people want to work for you because then if somebody offers them more money, they're gone. It's not really a good system. The Yankee approach, keeping with the, uh, <laughs> yes, the baseball right. analogies. That's right. You just pay the market value. And then 
you've got I me mean, people like to be appreciated when how to win friends and influence people you know I mean, people like to be appreciated they want to feel like they're making a difference you know a lot of people what happens when most people retire they die they die because <laughs> There's a you know, there's a little bit of you know there's <laughs> no but I mean, statistically the numbers are not good right? yeah. that's a top They're five comment good. ever on yeah. the building code. we might have to put that on that one might not make it no keep it in <laughs> keep it in that's or a right. t-shirt don't so, retire we I mean, know what happens is because they lose purpose right purpose is more important than money and if people like feel like they're providing environments for people, they have a great team, they're building a great product, you know, they're helping people live better because of their homes and they love where they're living. They get focused on purpose and they, there's a reason to wake up in the morning and go to work because you're making a difference in some way that will keep people with you If you're just showing up for money. It doesn't last forever and you go someplace else. Yeah, I think that's actually, you know, really resonating with Zach and I is like we working at Builder Trend have this like hyper, hyper, hyper focus right now on the customer and doing things that make our product better to make our customers business better, to make the homes better, to make the people living in the homes better. Because if you just come into work every day for a paycheck or thinking about, you know, my role and trying to be really, really good at that, that gets pretty boring pretty quick. But if you think, hey, you know, people are going to build. 20,000 homes on our software. Well, I remember I talked to Dan Houghton. He wanted to be Chief, Chief Jobs too, right? <laughs> yeah. And the reason he was driven by that is, is you know, Apple is a, is a, is a religion. It's, it's not a product, right? And in a sense, I think in Builder Trend, I think was voted one of the best places to work in the country or something, if I remember read right. It's because the same kind of thing. You want to do there because you're doing something useful. You're making a difference. And that's something contractors forget about. I mean, you're building homes for people, but you've got to focus on meaning and purpose in the day's job or you're just going to lose them. And that's something that a lot of contractors, they, they, they don't get it. They may have it themselves, but the minute it becomes just about money, people are going to leave and you're not going to attract the right people. Right. And it's kind of a two-part two part equation there, right? The first is that the company itself has to have a very clear purpose, a mission statement and core values. And then secondly, you have to empower your employees to embrace that, those core values, and to feel like they, they make an impact in the company and with their clients that they serve. I've yeah. seen a lot of builders do things with like tying the payouts to the, to the customer or to the, the worker based on like their margins on budgets and whatnot. Um, do you guys coach businesses on kind of like how to make the comp structure kind of fit well, market, but also I'm like not, to motivate? I'm not a huge fan of that. I mean, personally, yeah, I've seen it for, especially like I'm going to example, you know, the, the Christmas bonus or Turkey, right? Yeah. You just get it because you've been there. Well, pretty soon, if you don't give it, they get upset. And if you do give it, they don't do anything. Right. It doesn't mean anything. It's the Turkey at Christmas, like fine or whatever the bonus is. It needs to be attached to something that makes a difference to them. But at the same time, it still comes down to purpose. I mean, when you're building a home, talking about how the happy, happy the homeowner is, what a difference it made in people's lives. And a lot of contractors I know feel responsible for their employees as well as their families, mm -hmm. right? They feel like I'm keeping this together because I'm keeping, pick a number, you know, 15 people in their families working and that's important to me. And especially when the pandemic came, a lot of people had a hard time because the work slowed down a little bit and they kept people going, which is not the best economic decision. So again, it comes back to purpose. And the more you can focus on that, and it depends. I mean, you know, I remember, what was it? Um, I tell a quick story, I could tell a story anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> there, there, I can't there's, wait. Three, there's, there's three people, you can always cut this out. There's three, <laughs> there's three people working on a pyramid, right? And they're all, we're slaving away. And the first person, you know, they interview the guy who's working on the pyramid. He's, he says, I'm doing this, it sucks. You know, I'm sitting here, it's hot. You know, I don't like what I'm doing. I'm doing it because I have to do it to feed my family, but I wish I was someplace else. That's the first guy, right? Second guy says, I am a skilled Mason. You know, I am like a quality guy. I'm making, I love my trade. I'm making it, I'm, I'm really good at what I do. I'm one of the best Masons around and that's why I love doing this. And the third guy says, I'm building a monument to God. I mean, they all showed up for the same reason, but they weren't working the same work day. I'm stealing that. Yeah, I actually love that. <laughs> love that analogy. I uh, 
I feel like well, well, talking to you guys, I'm already a little uh, admittedly overwhelmed with all the different things that you guys offer and the wealth of knowledge you guys have. You talked about all the different roles you've been in and the things that you get to see. I want to circle back to uh, contractor staffing service a little bit. Could you guys maybe explain what all you offer? And if businesses are listening to this and, and interested in it, what are some of the benefits that they can take advantage well, of? Not just from a recruiting things, standpoint. Since my new favorite person is chat GPT. Right? <laughs> And I'll explain why that's true for our business, right? So we, we're an, an HR company, right? And, and as well as we hire people. So we basically build teams. That's what we do. We build teams, right? But when you're building a team, there's two parts of it. There's, there's taking the team you have and making it a better team. And that has to do with performance evaluations and how you can do better and, and tracking people and all that kind of stuff and just doing things better. But what happens is in the past, building a team, writing all those performance reviews, there was a ton of stuff we had to do and it was expensive, right? Because it took a lot of time and a lot of energy to offer all that. Plus we had the software, plus the appraisal systems and that took a long time. Well, that used to cost a lot of money. Now I can actually do it for free for clients, which to me is an awesome value because I've got all this technology. I've got really good assessments, which I can do almost for nothing actually. I've got good software. I've got GPT writing job performance evaluations. So we can go to a company and offer the process of building their team for free. And the reason we do that is we know when they need somebody, they're going to use us for recruiting. So our business model is to, we sit with the business and the building team part and all that we call the, the past system performance. We do all that at no charge, knowing that when we're their HR department, they're soon later going to need to bring people onto the team. And that's when they pay us like a monthly fee. Um, having done coaching, you know, coaching for forever, um, I think people should recruit all the time. So rather than offering like 20% of the first year's salary as a fee, we do it for a, like a reasonable monthly fee. So pick a number, like 2000 bucks a month, we'll do all the assessments, all the stuff, recruit as, you know, five positions and all that. So we become a part of their company because you know, being a recruiter is exactly fun because you're sort of stealing from one guy and paying him to get hired by somebody else. It's not the world's best thing to do. Whereas our model, we're like a service like you guys are, right? We're, we're a monthly service that people pay for that makes their business better, become part of the team. So that's why we forward has shifted. And what we've recently done is offered all those services at no cost. And then knowing that when we recruit for people, they'll chart, we will pay the monthly fee for the recruiting. So that's what we do. It and it's it's because it's a sorry, Paul, I, I was just wanted to mention, too, you know, contractors have this project mentality. Right. So, you know, which works for building a home. There's a beginning and ending, a middle and an end. But they take that same approach to recruiting. Right. They wait until they need someone. Then they go out and hire someone and then they stop recruiting. And we always tell people that recruiting is like marketing. It is a continuous process. It's not a project. And that's why, as Paul said, that's why we structure our pricing as that, because it should be an ongoing process of any successful construction business. It's much like the builder trends. I think it's an ongoing service that lets them do stuff better. And I think, you know, that's important. And when you think about it, I've been doing this for many years. And if you, know, you have three people, you have people, you have what, what are your three P's? I remember that. They were useful. What do they call them? So it's product, process, and people. Right. And so if you've got good marketing, then you have good clients, right? And then if you've got good systems like builder and stuff, you've got good systems. And then if you've got recruiting people like us, you've got good employees. So if you've got great employees, you've got a good process and you've got, you know, good people working for you. This is a great industry to be in. But most people mess up in this industry because they don't market all the time. So they, they have to take clients they don't want, which is bad. And they don't have the systems. They're not using web-based stuff like you've got. So they don't have the systems right. So it's really hard to manage their business. And then they don't know how to recruit. So they take people they shouldn't. And so if you've got somebody you don't want to work for using a system that sucks, working with people you don't like, it's not fun. It's so simple. <laughs> it's just so simple. I feel like, um, like I said, you guys just a wealth of information talking to you and, and we are getting up on time here, but I want to touch on one last thing is you, I was looking at your website before we got on, you guys have podcast episodes on there. You have a ton of free resources. We'll link to that, um, in our show notes. Charlie um, loves a good show note plug but, and a plug builder trend. Don't know if you caught that. Absolutely. If I'm people, trying, you know, I do my best here guys. <laughs> no, it's You're fantastic. It. I just want to say, uh, for people that are interested in go out to your website for some of those free resources, is there a good place to start or anything you kind of recommend them going and checking out? 
Yeah, go, go to contact your staffing source. And it's interesting, you can see all our people, which are literally all over the world. Um, and we've, I think, got a unique thing in the way we do things, because the reason we've grown from, you know, one person to where we are now, like we have 300 companies, is because we're providing, just like you guys, providing a valuable service to an industry that needs it. Because as an industry contractor, no offense, in the recruiting part is not something they're really very good at. They didn't go to become a builder because they know how to build a great team. And that's the skill that's going to make all the difference in their business. And I would encourage, you know, everyone to come and sign up for our performance assessment system. I mean, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And uh, you can really see a difference in how it can effectively help to really build and develop your team, your staff. Right. And then, you know, and as I said, there's always <laughs> on a sports team, there's always the the bottom 10 percent. There's the same, same thing in a, in a company. Right. I mean, there's always people that can either be developed into created to be better players or should be replaced by someone else. Mm -hmm. And the performance um, uh, uh, system that we have can really help to uh, to to clarify that and then, you know, roll into using the recruiting services when you need them. You know, I was using the analogy that, you know, you can still use a hammer instead of a nail gun. You can still use a shovel instead of a backhoe, you know, and there's no, and you can still use a, you know, a yellow pad instead of builder trim. I mean, that's all options, but it makes the business really hard. Whereas if you use technology, like you guys, and what we're providing to people, you're providing to people, it makes the industry a lot easier. And so to me, contractors that don't take advantage of that are just making life hard on themselves. Couldn't agree more. But yeah, and it's that's a great analogy too. I just thought of this that you know it really if you look at like Builder Trend uses technology to manage projects, and we use technology to manage staff and and recruiting. Right. So it's a main, it's basically very similar. It's it, because we've very got similar killer approach. assessments that have taken years and years to develop, which I can know. I said more about you than your mom about thirty minutes. We've got great applicant tracking systems, which allow us to put it on you know two hundred eighty eight job boards plus searched the budget databases. Plus, I mean, we can if the person's out there, we'll find ninety percent of the time we find the right person, and they don't have access to that. And then with you know the performance assessment system, we've got a way of putting it together that they can build the team and keep it there. So it's just not using technology in the construction business. It's just not smart. I mean, what can I say? I yeah. love it. Well, you're, pe you're preaching to the choir here for sure. So uh, I think that was an awesome, awesome note to end on. Really, really appreciate your guys' time. Uh, okay. I, I I don't have anything else, Zach. You got anything? No, yeah, we really appreciate it. And, and you guys are always welcome back to talk more because I think Absolutely. we've unraveled a bunch of topics. I would love to do one on AI with you guys. That's what we should get that going. They're looking at us right. like, hey, maybe we will. All right. Zach and cool. I won't be here for it, though. We'll right. just have uh, chat GPT do the, <laughs> the interview for yeah, us. Really. <laughs> That'd be hey, awesome. By what, what does 100 trillion parameters really mean? <laughs> yeah. Let's push the boundaries. Let's figure it out. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Talk to you later. All guys. right. Charlie, <laughs> time for the outro. What did you think, Charlie, of Ed and Paul? Well, Zach, I think I think that your outro is a lot more uh, enthusiastic than your intro well, was. Well, the interview, just how could you not with Ed and Paul? I'm I just, was. Uh, yeah. I'm, ah, I was actually getting pretty fired up listening yeah. to him. Can, I like, you, can you tell when, when the, I'm like really feeling the interview? I feel like I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know? I, I can't. Uh, they were, Ed, was, Ed and Paul, I want to go to San Diego and just hang out. Well, Zach, we'll add that to our list of places that, uh, our bucket list of where we'll record the podcast. Um, but no, they were great. I And they gave us everything that I was kind of hoping that they would going into the interview uh, with a lot of very, very solution oriented listening to those guys talk. Uh, I appreciate the perspective they had both from where they've came in the past to, the, to what they're building for the future. Um, and I thought they were honestly preaching a lot of the same things that we preach here at Builder Trend, uh, which was cool to kind of see parallel theirs as well. Um, but definitely a couple of guests that we need to schedule another interview with because I feel like we got through a third of the content. I was not, I didn't walk into the studio today expecting to hit on like AI when we're talking about staffing. <laughs> right. What a, what a great segue into the future of technology in the construction industry. I've seen that more and more. Good way to you know find rep replications for labor is technology in these different tools. So I really love these these industry veterans like yeah. embracing these emerging technologies and really taking that to the next level and how you can use that even in a small to medium sized business. So yeah, good right way, great way to hit the weekend after day or today on the building code. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, I have to dip out of here right after this to catch a flight. Otherwise, I'd sit around and 
and debrief with you for a couple more hours. But I will see you bright and early Monday morning, Zach. And I will see everyone else uh, on our next episode, I guess. Can't wait. I'm Zach Watovich. And I'm Charlie Bertwistle. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel 